Calvinists. There are people who hold to some of the things that Calvinists believe, but are not uh, Calvinists. I'm not a Calvinist. I, I, I hold to election uh, and I hold to eternal security, but that's not that 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 predates Calvinism. And oh, by the way, if we go to John three, uh, and oh, by there are church fathers that did not hold to water baptism, which also have understood like the purpose like who? of water. Well, hold on. You have to understand what the purpose of water baptism is. I mean, what why they did that. But no, if, well, you if, just made a statement. Hold on, wait a second. Very if important. you want to hold to what the what the early church fathers believed in, then we got a problem. Why? Because all the early church fathers weren't Trinitarians. Some of the early church fathers were modalists. Matter of fact, John's disciple Polycarp uh, subscribed to modalistic views. Are we going to say you have, that? What, do you have any evidence of that? Not, not, not offhand. Not, not offhand. I've, I've, I've covered this before, but I've read all I can't, Polycarp's writing. He, I, I did not Listen, read any modalism in there. Here's what, here's what we can read. We can read the scriptures ourselves. John three, Jesus says, um, speaking to the Pharisee, he says that. Uh, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot uh, see the kingdom of God. Well, what does the word born again mean? I'll ask you, Don. What does the word born again mean? Before we change the topic. We're still talking I, about baptism. Right. But what I started this, the point I made was that this doctrine is a brand new doctrine. Who okay. in church history can you I'm not, I, listen? I'm not I'm that not I'm taught, not, I, that taught what you're saying right off the top of my head. I, I do not know. But my point to that is I'm not getting ready to have an argument or a fight over what church fathers believe because church fathers had an issue with the Trinity. That's my point. So which I'm not going to go to them. Had an issue with the Trinity. Excuse me? Which church fathers had an issue with the Trinity? Polycarp. Poly, Polycarp was telling folks to subscribe to another church father um, who taught modalism. And so there was an issue as to um, they all believe that Jesus was God, but in what way? And so because a church father got something wrong or different on something doesn't mean anything. But what we can do, we can go to the scriptures. But so do I they ask all, you the question. But so do I they all the agree on water baptism, though? So I'm asking you the questions. I could care less what any of them did, since if you can name which one died on the cross for me, what I'm going to run to is the scripture. So my question is going to be John 3, 3. What does it mean to say that one is born again? What does the phrase born again mean? Well, we can simply put that you've received the Holy Spirit. Like that's the most simple answer. Is that Are we generated? Uh, yeah, you've you've received the Holy Spirit, but um, you know, Paul gives more elaborate explanations in the scriptures. I don't have these well, memorized. But well, yeah. okay, so let's just say what let's let's just deal with, with Jesus right here. He's mm -hmm. saying that it's required that a person be born again. Now you're telling me that John three is speaking about water baptism, and so yeah. we're in. And so we're in John three. Jesus says, unless one is born again, the word, the Greek word is genethe, a note. And it's important to understand this word genethe because it's from the Greek word genomai, which is which means to be a God to, to bear. And so genomai or genethe, a note means to be it has two, two, re, two main, two meanings to be. Well, born, I find, OK, I'm sorry, on. I don't want to cut to you be off. born a second time or again or from above Nicodemus was confused and thinking it can it means born again. He goes with uh, maybe a natural reading, a natural understanding, but he's wrong. He thinks it means be born a second time or born again. Jesus corrects him. He says, no. As a matter of fact, as he goes to verse five, after Nicodemus is confused in verse four, he says, truly I say to you that unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So is what Jesus said in verse five different than what he said in verse three? born again and born of water and spirit are those two different things well what thing. i what i think is interesting is that the men who actually spoke fluent greek and were um you know very versed in the bible for 1500 years they all interpreted that verse to mean water baptism so what we're not going to do what we can't do is say because i didn't i wasn't there with them that my greek is flawed is my greek flawed well, all I'm saying is their understanding of Greek would be better because the, that was their native tongue. Would you well, not why, say their English is better? Then, than why, then why are we having any discussions about the Bible if it's left up to them to determine what we should believe? Well, in Second Peter, we are told that the untaught uh, and the unstable twist the scriptures to their own mm -hmm. destruction. Who taught you? Well, I, a, a Greek scholar. Okay. A, a literal mm -hmm. Greek scholar. So, but right. my question is this. My question is though, Don. A Greek scholar taught you Greek, but who taught okay. you your doctrine about water baptism? Again, my question to you, I'm asking you because you're not answering, you're done dealing with the text. Your response is to, you know what? 
I don't want to deal with Corey on the text. Let me go to maybe some fallacy that Corey doesn't know the Greek or some early church father believes this. So I'm asking you, Don, either you're going to look at the scriptures or you're going to get the early writings of the early church fathers. My question is, uh, if John 3 is about baptism, if Jesus says in John 3, 3, you must be born again, them, and then he comes back in verse 5, after Nicodemus was confused and says you must be born of water and spirit, is Jesus talking about the same thing, being born of the same thing, or is he talking about two different things? It's an easy question. No, it's not because you're being inconsistent. On one hand, you acknowledge that I don't know you. I don't know Greek. I didn't you say you didn't. Input, but you impl you're trying to implement the use of Greek in your argument. For all I know, no. you're completely misunderstanding how that Greek word is used and what it means. So how am I supposed to verify that? Okay, can I share my screen? Yeah, uh, click uh, present. Okay, hold on. Let me let me exit full screen. Go to present. And then share screen. And then, uh, share screen. And then go to window or entire screen or Chrome tab, whatever is your preference. Okay, if I can figure this out. Yeah, it's easy. Just go to window, entire Windows. screen or Chrome tab. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Okay, is that it right there? Yeah. Okay. So let me go to this passage. So can you see this, Don? Yes, I can see your screen. All right. At the very bottom, when I run my, my, my cursor over it, you can see the word. So you don't have to take my word. You can take the I other. Don't, I don't understand what's on your screen right now, sir. What is all that? That the scribbles on the right. I can't read Greek, bro. <laughs> so that's why we need to be taught. The Peter said we must be taught. And so who is your teacher? Right. You would have to say that the entire church, you cannot find your competing doctrine Anywhere then, in church than then Don. Why why in the world what do you even the read the Bible? What, the, what is the evidence you have that your doctrine existed at 1000 AD? Don, all I'm doing simply is this. I'm simply reading the scriptures in English and in Greek. You okay. fault you fault me, which I don't know why you would fault a person for knowing Greek, learning the Greek, and trying to apply it. So now my question is, and I'm just reading the English part, we'll just deal with the English. In John 3, 3, Jesus says, and it's pretty easy, Don, when Jesus says you must be born again, and then he uh, he follows up by saying you must be born of water and spirit. Is he saying, speaking of two different things you must be born of, or is he speaking of the same thing? That's my question. Well, as John Calvin taught, well, I guess you're not a Calvinist, so I don't really appeal to John Calvin outside of speaking to Calvinists, but you cannot separate the water being reborn of the water from being reborn of the spirit. So and that, again, wait, wait, hold on. If that's the question. My point, if it's so easy, why then did the men who speak Greek fluently and put the Bible together, why couldn't they understand that they were talking about two different things? Don, I don't know. I'm at, so now I'll come back to asking you the question again. Mm -hmm. Verses three and verses five, are they speaking about, is Jesus speaking about the same thing or two different things? I'm not even sure I understand your question. My question, Jesus says in John 3, 3, mm -hmm. you must be unless one is born again. Yeah. So the first thing he says, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus in verse four says, how can that be? Can a person enter a second time in his mother's womb? Then Jesus comes back instead of saying born again. He instead says you must be born of the water and spirit in order to enter, in order to enter the kingdom of God. So he says in verse three, born again, in verse five, born of water and spirit is born again the same as being born of water and spirit. Or are they two different things? No, I would say that this speaking about the same event. OK, then yeah. Jesus comes back and says that you must be born of the spirit. Is that the same as the first two? He's saying that being born again is being born of water and the spirit. And so the two are united. OK, so so what about being born of the spirit? Is that the same thing? The same thing as what? As the first two born, being born again and born of water and spirit. Well, it's a part of being born again. Jesus clearly said it right there. You have to be born of water and the spirit. OK, so now so 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 we're saying so let me understand you. Being born again, being born of water and spirit, and being mm -hmm. born of the spirit are the same things. All I can do is articulate it how it says right here. You see, you're trying to divide it up into three things, but no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm saying it's the same thing. Yeah. No, no. Uh, your question is 
poorly constructed. This is what's going on. Verse three is saying the same thing as verse five. Mm -hmm. And what verse five is saying is that you need water and the spirit, like okay. both, both the water and the Holy Spirit play a role in the process of your being cleansed in the sacrament of baptism. So, so it, without the water, you cannot be baptized. Okay. You cannot be born again. Okay. A couple of things. Uh, one, besides, one. besides whatever exceptions God may make, but we don't we don't practice our faith based on exceptions. So here's here's what here's what Jesus is saying. The first time he says it in verse three, that's the first way he introduces introduces this to uh to Nicodemus. Now, it's not the first time it was introduced because the first time this being born from above is introduced is in John 1 when he says being born of God. So being born of God, but I'll leave it to the side. So Jesus says you must be born again. That's how he starts it off. No mention of water or anything. Nicodemus is confused. So Jesus is trying to explain to him and correct him. So then Jesus introduced being born of water and spirit. Some what people, does water some, what does the water mean to you? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Since, I, cool. I, since I'm still sharing the screen, I'll show you in just one second. Mm -hmm. He brings in being born of water and spirit. Why? So Nicodemus should know then when he says being born of water and spirit. How should Nicodemus know, know this? Jesus goes on and says so that being born of, of the spirit is the same thing. He says that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Notice what's missing in verse six. That's born of the water. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. He goes back to being born again. Now he wants to introduce an analogy to him and to us to help us understand. The wind blows, verse 8, where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it's going. So is everyone who is what? Born of the Spirit. Now, that same word that's used there, being Ganethe uh, is also being, being brought in here. So if you're born again, you are born of the spirit. Nicodemus is still confused. Jesus says, how can you are how can you how can you be this confused? He says, are you the teacher of Israel and you don't understand this? Well, where is this brought up at? Well, let's go to uh, where, where it first brought where we can clearly understand in Ezekiel 36. And then you'll see where this issue the first time we see this issue of being born of water and spirit comes up and it has nothing to do nothing at all to do with water baptism. Let me make this a little bit bigger in case someone wants to see. He says in verse 20, 25, he says, then I will sprinkle, notice the elements here, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. And I will cleanse you, by the way, that was the word that you was using earlier about being cleansed. And I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a, a new heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Is God stating that this person is getting physical, literal physical water in him? No, he's not. He's speaking analogous to water being spirit. Sometimes this word Kai or and is not just is not used as and but also namely yet. Now, Corey, you know, where does this say that the water is spirit? Well, we see this in John 4, Jesus, in the very next chapter, Jesus brings this up about this water welling up in this woman or in all of us. Is he speaking about actual physical water? No, he's, he's using this water um, uh, uh, hypothetically or not hypothetically, it's a figure of speech analogous to the Holy Spirit. That's what's happening in John 4, being born of the water or have this water uh, welling up in you, this living water. Is he speaking about a physical water? No, he's not talking about baptism, nor is he in John 3 speaking about actual physical physical water baptism. Baptism isn't even brought up in John 3 at all. It's never it's never even mentioned. The word which, which existed is not even mentioned in John 3. So to make that leap, we make that leap because someone told us that. But to look at the scriptures, no one, they, you don't even see the word being brought there. You've just been born of water born of water, born of the spirit, is used analogous with being born from above. Born from above has nothing to do with a physical water baptism. How do I know? John, in Acts 10, we see people receiving the Holy Spirit having never been baptized. So we can't say that it's a, it's a requirement to be physically water baptized to receive the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you are his child. Okay. Uh, could you repeat that last point that you just made? That if you uh, have the Holy Spirit, you are his you child. Know, what so you said prior, like right immediately before that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which which um which part you're speaking of. 
Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you just said a lot, to be honest, but like I said, the entire church for 1,500 years taught this exact doctrine that all of the verses, you see, I could list for you a number of verses that clearly speak to the, the fact that you need to be born again and water plays a role in that, but you're list just one. going to say it's never speaking about water. List one. Okay, all right. Let me let me find some for you. <clears throat> I'll just I'll, I'll I'll type it in as you as you um uh Corey and Don okay. <clears throat> real quick Corey here, and Don here in, so here Acts chapter twenty two verse sixteen it says arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord mm -hmm. or Galatians chapter three verse twenty seven. For as many of you as oh, hold on, wait a second, wait a, wait a second. All right, let's go to let's go to. I would prefer if you're only going to do one. I don't know how long this is going to last, but go to Galatians chapter three verse twenty seven instead. I think this is a better verse. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay, that's there. That's clearly saying as many of you who were baptized now is that baptism metaphorical solely spiritual or are they talking about water baptism so right there? so here let me, let me let you answer the question is there a such thing as spirit baptism well this that's is not right. answering the question i, 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 I i'm gonna get there i'm gonna get there wait, is wait, there wait, a wait, such I'm thing as you if this baptism is referring to water baptism that's why i need to ask this question though is because by the way, I used to believe the same thing that you had to be water baptized. So my question is, is there a such thing as being baptized in the spirit? Yes, the Bible uses okay. the language of being baptized in the Holy okay. Spirit. Mm -hmm. So there's so there's two possibilities: either baptism in water or bapt baptism in the spirit. If Galatians 3:27 means only baptism in the water, well, then what would then what about being so so baptism in the spirit? Doesn't mean anything. So for all of you who were baptized in the water into, into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. So he's all leaving conspicuously, okay. conspicuously absent then would be leaving off the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul tells us that all of us who are in Christ have been baptized in the Spirit. All right. So here's the answer to your, your question. One, if we recall John 3, 5, Jesus never disconnected being born of the water and the Spirit. The two happened at the same time. Two, when... Um, no, hold on, stop. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish making my point. When uh, the apostles of John the Baptist were asked if they had received the, the if they had received the Holy Spirit, uh, and they said we heard we heard nothing about this Holy Spirit, you know. And then they were asked, "What were you baptized into?" They were baptized into John's baptism. What did the apostles immediately do? Baptize them in water. Mm -hmm. And then they receive the Holy Spirit. So the Bible never divorces being baptized in the Spirit from being baptized uh, in water in regards to the purposeful action that you can take to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, can God anoint his Holy Spirit on anyone? Of course. And can God receive someone into the kingdom of heaven, like in the instance that J.P., spoke about where you know you give your life to christ you get hit by a bus you weren't given an uh, an opportunity to be baptized can god accept you into heaven clearly jesus forgives sins he forgave sins of people who didn't get baptized he the thief on the cross said that was told that he will be with the lord in paradise so of course god can do whatever he wants but when it comes to securing uh your salvation when it comes to intentionally stepping into the body of Christ. We were given a very specific sacrament, and that is water baptism. Okay, so you said the two are the two are connected. First of all, in John three, the two are not connected because again, nowhere in John three do we see baptism being named. Water, Second, Corey. Water. It's talking about the baptism. I know. Okay, so water. So every time we see the word water, that means baptism. No, but that verse, Jesus is clearly talking about baptism, and that's how the entire Why is Jesus church, clearly talking about baptism when it's not even mentioned. Assembled your Bible, all believed that it was talking about baptism. Okay, so 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 so, so yeah. you say now no, again, I mean, prove me otherwise. I'm it, not trying to prove you otherwise because again, as I said before, and I've said it on my channel several times, I really could care less what any of the church fathers 
uh, thought. However, I've got the scriptures that are given to us by the Holy Spirit. And so in John three, the word baptism is not even mentioned, even though we've got someone going around baptizing people that's mentioned even before we get to John three. John one doesn't speak about baptism, even though in John one, we have someone going around baptizing people and you say the two are always there. Well, in John 10, I mean, Acts 10, we see people being saved, having the spirit prior to water baptism. As a matter of fact, we see people in Acts being saved, having. Corey, the that they let me ask you this, Corey, just to, to put you on the record. So you don't believe that a Christian like so I can go my whole life without getting baptized in water and be fine. It's not it's not a requirement for salvation. Find the passage to say it's a requirement for salvation. That's interesting because so John three five. Wait, wait. So hold on. John, hold we on. Didn't so say that. If somebody comes to hold on, if somebody accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they say, oh, I don't want to get baptized, I'm good. And they live their whole lives without getting baptized just because they're too lazy to and they don't want to. You're saying that they're good. I wouldn't say they're good or bad. My point is, there's no pastor that tells me that if the person doesn't get baptized, that the person is not saved. Well, just for the sake of argument, let's say if it's good or bad now. So do you do you for say the sake that of argument? I've got to have a scripture. That's that's the point. I got not, I got your scripture right here. First Peter chapter three verse twenty one. That namely, there's an there's an antitype among us that saves us, uh, namely baptism. You know what an anti what is antitype? It's a symbolism. So there's a symbolism that matter of fact, let's go there. First but Peter does it three save us. Does it save us? And also Absolutely. Mark 16 as well, too. First Peter 3, 21. Corresponding to that baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, which is what they why they had the physical water baptism. No, it's not. But it's not a bath. It, it, it actually is. It actually, actually is. is. It That's actually is. is. They do not baptize you so that so you don't have to take it's a shower. It's a symbolism of being washed. <laughs> no. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's a symbolism of being washed of sin, not of dirt. Not not the removal of dirt from flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience, conscience through the resurrection of Christ. What is he speaking of? Well, what comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit. This is why Paul says in in Romans, not Romans, First uh, Corinthians twelve, that all Christians have been baptized into the Spirit by one Spirit have been baptized. So, which Christians? J uh, JP Don. All of them or just those who have been water baptized? All of them, those from day who've been saved for a Can second. you pull up that verse? That's for, interesting. Uh, First Corinthians 12. Hey, hey Corey, I got uh -huh. a quick question, brother. Um, do you know why Jesus commands the water baptism? Hold on, and hold on, on, brother. Before you for, do that, because I'm by one spirit, for by okay. one spirit, we were all baptized. And by the way, there's a word, Pontes Ace Ain't mm -hmm. Soma. Uh, a Baptist amen, which is we've all been baptized into one body, where the Jew or Greek, slave or free, we're all made to drink of one spirit. Is he speaking of water baptism or is he speaking of spirit baptism? Yeah, but what I think Don is saying, and Don can speak for himself, but what this is what I'm hearing because you both are mm -hmm. making great arguments. Okay, so I'm gonna really look into this myself, but it appears Don doesn't deny this. Don is saying that there is this and there is water, so there's two. Correct, none. If I'm uh, correct, me if I'm wrong. Here, I I think that if we go back to First um, Peter chapter three and go back a few verses, it becomes undeniable that they are saying that baptism saves you, and that baptism is a water baptism. So if we go back to John right. chapter three, uh, and we go to uh, let's let's start at verse eighteen, and, and read down um, to verse. 22. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made proclamations to the spirits now in prison, who once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the, of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Christ. So now here's a question. Is he saying that what saves us is bat water baptism? Because we got a problem. We've got people in the Bible 
who were never tested to have been baptized, such as those in first in Acts 13, 48. So obviously the thief on the cross, obviously those in Acts 10. And so we don't see that. As a matter of fact, we can't say when a large portion of people who we see their profession of faith when they actually got saved. Is it a good thing? And again, just to make it clear, I'm not saying don't get baptized. What I am saying is I'm not going to introduce a doctrine that says that if you don't get water baptized, you're going to hell. So that means you have the Holy Spirit in you and maybe you're confused. Maybe things happen and you never get water baptized. The Holy Spirit leaves you. Well, That's let me ask you something, Corey. Does baptism save you? Not not water baptism. Spirit baptism does. So why do they use the why do they relate it back to the water in verse 20? What because was the, the point? Word, of, what was the point of Pete? What was the point Peter was trying to make there? Because the word that's used here is this word antitype, which is this symbolism. And so he's saying, so so he he he's giving he's giving something that that is not to be taken as it's the water baptism says there's something else, this other symbolism that, that that saved you. It's the Holy Spirit, this baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why the passage that you that you brought up. Acts 327, where it says, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. For some reason, you take that as water baptism, but then what happens to those talking about water baptism there? Do what he's 100 percent talking about water baptism there. Okay, well, fine. If you're born, if, if you're water baptized, you have been baptized in Christ. But what about those who haven't been water baptized but been baptized in the spirit? What about those who've been water baptized but have not been baptized in the spirit? What about them? So we so we conspicuously conspicuously leave out. Yeah, and what about all the people who've never heard about Jesus Christ? Are they all gonna burn in hell forever? If they if if I don't know, I have no idea. There I know go. this. There you I go. Or you just answered your own question, bro. Do what? You don't know. We don't know the grace that God extends to the individual based on their experiences, we their do ignorances. Know. Okay. If a person has the Holy Spirit, are they saved? If a person has the Holy Spirit, are they saved? Yes or no? I would say at the point of death, yeah, anyone who dies with the Holy Spirit dwelling within them, yeah. Is what saved. about if they have the Holy Spirit like today? Are they saved? Well, they can le lose the Holy Spirit. There's no such passage. There's no such passage. <laughs> well, let's we'll deal with one. So, no, we're, 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 talk, we're, we're talking about the passage you brought up, Galatians 3.27. If a person has been baptized in the, in the Spirit, it's clearly what he's speaking of. You have clothed on. You've no, been clothed it's not. Okay, so tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why this is baptism of water. Tell me why John. I mean Galatians three twenty seven. Here's I'm curious about this. Can we go to um like a an established lexicon and see how they determine how this word is being used? If it's talking about a spiritual baptism or if it's talking about water baptism? Well, the only word that's used here is is the word for uh, the, the Greek. If you can see on the screen, it's highlighted. The word that's used here is a baptist thing, which is to be baptized. It doesn't right. say if it's baptized in water or spirit. Right. No, but the reason I want to appeal to a lexicon is because, one, I don't speak Greek. So let's not forget that. Um, I clearly believe that it's talking about water baptism. But if we of what? A lexicon. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you read a lexicon that told you that John, the Galatians, by the way, that's what a lexicon does. Um, but did you read anywhere where Galatians 3 is talking about water baptism? Matter of fact, no, anywhere, I, read, I read I read, the church fathers who all unanimously believe that it is there anywhere in Galatians baptism. 3 where the word water is even brought up? Yeah, it is. Actually, go back to that verse and then go back to the verse prior to it. Okay. For verse 26, for you no, are verse, all verse 20. Verse 20. We were looking at which ver we were looking at verse 21, right? Go to verse 20. No, no, in Galatians 3 27, is that we're talking about, about being baptized. We're saying what saves you. I said, what saves you is the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's what saves you. You're saying what saves you is being baptized in water, not being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're no, the error that you're making is you're divorced into two. You believe that. The sacrament, as instituted by the Lord, uh, it, it, Peter do you have to take it, communion too? Baptized for the for so that you can receive the Holy Spirit. Do you have to take the so you have to be baptized by in water in order to receive the Holy Spirit? That is the way that we're instructed if we desire okay. to receive the Holy Spirit. Do you, do you also have to do you also have to take communion to be saved? Since I mean, since we're going to bring up all well, these, no, I rather I rather stay on one topic and not. Well, no, hey, because, Hey, hey, right. Don, you're, hey, you're saying bringing up these different sacraments, 
No, well, no, no, then, no, I'm not. I only talk about one sacrament, baptism. Tell me what you brought up, communion, not me. So because it's also me, it's also a sacrament. Don't accuse me that I brought up different sacraments. I only yeah. brought talk about follow, follow what I'm saying. Follow what I'm saying. No, right the, that, because if you say that we have to, if you're saying because if you're saying we have to keep the sacraments to be saved, right? Well, do we have to keep all the sacraments? Is I never saved? said we have to keep the sacraments to be saved. I'm saying what the Bible says. You, baptism you, now. You actually did say that. You no, actually did say that. that. When did I say that, Corey? That you have to keep all hey, the sacraments to be saved. Hey, hey, Don. Hey, Don. We can actually go to the Irish lexicon. Wait, let's be clear. I never said that. That's a lie. Uh, I only said what the Bible said, which is that so, you must be now so, baptism now saves. That's what the Bible says. So let's just say this. Let's 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 say this because because I'm well past my time. Yeah, I don't know if you heard my grand my grandkids knock at the door, but. Um, let me just say this. If anywhere in Scripture, I don't know how we got off this because I, well, Marcus brought this up. And my issue was, if you're going to say something, exegete the text. I think the problem is, and this is with all due respect, Don, this has kind of been your problem. You listen to so many different voices, so many different people. No, false. false, false. Let me say what I'm saying, Don. Okay, false. fine, fine. The history of you on one one authority. This entire the, conversation. Listen, the history of you on the history of you on YouTube has been that you have been over here, over here, over here, which is true. Fine. I've been and, and, by, by and I've never, and I've never, I've never, I've never once came out and said, you know what, young Don is a heretic. He's going. That's not true. Right. You've said worse things about me. I've seen him on stream. Oh, I said, I said you've been foolish and said some things. But I said, you know you what? Said, I can't read. You said you said you boasted about having a degree and said uh, before you try teaching the Bible, you should learn how to read. You, you remember oh, what listen, you said? No, that? listen. Let me say it again. I mean that. I meant that. You oh, need so to I learn how. To, that's what I'm saying. I said it again. I'll, I'll okay. be pretty clear. Go ahead. You need to learn how to read. Not, not not that you don't know what your ABCs. You need to learn how to read the scriptures. You listen to too many voices, too many different people. You get moved here and there. That's your history on YouTube. So I've stated. Sure, you, you just got caught in a debate. And I've, said, to, I've, said, I've, said, I've said, I've said, I've said that let young young Don come around. He hadn't been saved very long. So at some point in time, young Don might get his footing. And so for that reason, I'm not going to cast him aside. Hey, is young Don saved? I, I would. I've never said he is or he is not. Uh, I like what he's doing in terms of him working himself through. But here. This is the problem, and this is why I'm, I'm bringing this up. You're reading passages, but you're relying on someone else to tell you what it is. You're listening to what you think all of the church fathers, by the way, not all church fathers are in unison, but the issue is what does the text say, the text that were inspired by Scripture. And if you go to Galatians 3.27, where you say this is your definitive proof to show that you must be baptized in water, so I said, well, fine, if that's your definitive proof that you must be baptized in water, what about being baptized in the Holy Spirit? Because if that means being baptized in water, then that means that that leaves off baptized in the spirit. But Paul says all of us have been baptized in the spirit. I go to uh, John 3 that you brought up. John 3, you said it's talking about being baptized in the water. But that's clearly not what he's speaking of. And it clearly harkens back to Ezekiel 36. Is God speaking about being baptized in water in your heart? Or when Paul talks about it in Titus, about being regenerated or the washing of the spirit, is that also being baptized? No, it's not. Because he's using the word polygonimai, which is to be born from above in both cases. That's why it would be helpful for you to learn either how to read the English, but also, listen, take the Greek. I heard someone say that you were studying the Greek. Study the Greek. Understand what these words mean. Wait, so you, so you don't believe you don't believe yourself. Roman. You've been going for a while now. Let me get a chance. Go ahead. Do you believe that all Roman Catholics, uh, Roman Catholic priests, Eastern Orthodox priests, um, and all Protestants who believe that this is talking about water baptism, none of them can read? Is that what your official position? I could care less what they believe. If we had a conversation, I would do the same thing. Do I believe they can read? Exactly what I I'm think, saying. You say I think that I think I what I believe is because I can't read. So just on record, do you believe all Eastern Orthodox priests, Roman Catholic priests, and Protestants who believe that this is talking about water baptism, none mm -hmm. of them can read? Is that your... Do you think I'm going to change my position because you brought them up? It's Here's a, what I mean. Let me make a no question. Let me make it clear what I mean by that, by you not being able to read. When we, when we have a conversation, when we read the text, if you are going to have what you read influenced by either your presuppositions, your doctrine, what grandma, what grandpa said, or what the Catholic church said, or this person said, or the church father said, 
That's not reading. That's you taking your cues from them. And so what does the Catholic Church believe? Whatever they've been told to read. No, the Catholic Church cannot read. None okay. of this. Good. Now, can they read English? Can they read Greek? Sure. I'm not mean they, they can't articulate words and put a sentence structure together. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that their reading, their understanding is influenced by doctrine or by someone withholding maybe a, 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 a salary or a position. That's right. the point. So here's the flaw. This. Okay. Here's, ahead, a flaw in, here's a flaw in your argument. Mm -hmm. uh, in that verse, let's go back to that verse. You're saying that, okay, essentially you're not understanding the way the Greek is being used here. Which passage? Right? Uh, let's first Peter chapter three, verse 21. Okay. Right. Where it says, namely baptism. Now, if we take a look at that word, is it possible this word is referring to water baptism? Take away your. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. The baptism here, if you yeah. notice on my screen, it's, it's highlighted in purple or magenta. Uh-huh. Where that why that's highlighted now that was highlighted prior to us coming on because okay. there was a study that we did over baptism the different types of baptism that's, that's named and I would use either uh, it's used one of two or three ways either to signify water so I would have it underlined in magenta to um so I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry 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 I would have the blue uh as a water and the the the, the magenta uh as spirit and the white as unsure and so here, corresponding or this antitype to that, that's the word that's used here, um, this word antitupon, which is an antitype, a typology or symbolism, which is namely baptism, not the removal of dirt from flesh, not of the flesh, uh, the removal of dirt, but so what, so which baptism are we talking about? A baptism that is an answer or an appeal to God for a good conscience. So he's not talking about water baptism. He's saying there's something that saves us. There's an antitype among us that saves us, namely baptism. Well, what baptism? Not the removal of, of dirt from flesh, which someone would have to ass assume because there's only two types of baptism that we can think of. There's only two types of baptism, Don, either water baptism or spirit baptism. Do you think he's negating the spirit baptism here? So, again, you keep trying to separate water baptism from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I sure am. Well, sure that's not what the Bible does. If you say uh, so. Because, yeah, because when the disciples of John the Baptist, again, were asked if they received the Holy Spirit, what did the apostle do immediately after realizing that they had not learned well, about so the gospel? You just, so describe? using them, is, is, this, is this proving your point? John, yes, John? it is. 100%. Because so, you see that they didn't have, they, he asked them if they had the Holy Spirit. They're mm -hmm. like, we have not heard of the Holy Spirit. And then he baptizes them in water. Don, Don. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's let's go to Acts. Two. Let's, go to Acts. Let's, let's go to Acts. Uh, where is this at? Acts 18 or Acts 19? Hey, can I jump in and ask a quick question, real quick, Corey? Uh, sure. Um, so in Romans 6, verse 3 and 4, it says that, Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death. So my question is, does everybody have to die with Christ first in order to be born again? Say it again. So does everybody have to die with Christ first in order to be born again? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, Jesus mm -hmm. have been baptized into his death? So is this a water baptism? Or spirit? So, so now ask your question again. So my question is, do we all have to die with christ first in order to be born again we're not die. We, we don't die as a physical death so but what is paul saying that we were buried with him by baptism into death and this is an actual water baptism we no, can go not. to the thighs all, all of us let's go to thighs okay so or do Thyers. you not know that, that all of us have been baptized into christ so does that mean that every single believer has been baptized in water at that time no but the thing is when we go down in water we die with christ because hold on, because hold on, when hold on, we hold, hold on answer the question so when, when we die with Christ all, all of us you, is all mm -hmm. does that mean every single person who at were that baptized time, has every single yeah, person at that time been baptized 100 in water 100% that he's saying that every single person he's referring to has been baptized in water 
Okay, so so where does where does where does where does spirit that baptism come in? It doesn't become optional so, till after the Protestant where, Reformation. Where does spirit so, baptism come in? At then? The church so, so never for, becoming a Christian from being baptized. Where in in Romans six, if he's speaking about water baptism, mm -hmm. then when and where does spirit baptism come in? Again, you keep Afterwards. the force in. You see, you don't Afterwards. believe in the power yeah. of baptism. That's okay. what's clearly so, evident so, here. So, so the passage that, that Let me give you evidence. Up, it's a the vein. passage that Don brought up was in was Acts 19. He says, did yep. you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And they said to him, we have not even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. And he said, then what were you baptized into? Into John's baptism. Okay, pause, pause. Oh, pause, pause, pause. Wait, wait, wait. Is Don, John's Don, baptism, let him finish. Wait, wait, wait. Is John's <laughs> baptism a water baptism? Excuse me? Is John's is. baptism a water baptism? Yes, it's a water baptism. Okay, okay, continue. So, so, so hold on. So, so what's happened here? We've got some people who have been water baptized who don't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because they were baptized into John's baptism, not Jesus's. Come on, bro. Wait, no, so, hold on. so the baptism, the water baptism is a baptism at that time. By the way, the whole point of this was that you've got this, this chronological happening in the body of Christ or the new church where you've got the Jews. You've got the Samaritans, you've got the Gentiles, and then John's disciples who have been faithful, but they have not received the Holy Spirit. And so you have that happening here. So these are people that have been baptized in water, but they're okay. but they clearly they they clearly don't have the Holy Spirit. Because whose baptism were they baptized into? Into John. But was it was was it a water baptism? Yes, but it's it, not just any and any water baptism. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me, but, let me so, 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 Corey, so Corey, you know, let's go ahead and so, so Don, let's go ahead and go yeah. through the text because we see that right. Paul baptized them again. It says they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So now we see water and spirit right there in the text. But the, the point. The, so uh, here's the thing, Corey. If water baptism, since they already did the water baptism, why mm -hmm. didn't Paul just go straight to laying the hands on them because you already did the water thing? Why did he feel it necessary to put them in water again? Amen. <laughs> so now here's the question. Praise God. This baptism, this baptism, is it a water baptism? This is one of the ones that we had. I don't have it here anyway, but it was highlighted in in white. Why? Because is this is is this when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Is this a water or is it a, is it a spirit or is it both? Because it's not definitive. We kept that as 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 white. Don't know. Have no idea. But I don't have a problem. Even if that was a water baptism. All my, my point is to say that it's water baptism, as you were trying to say in Galatians three, as you were trying to say that uh, Romans six was saying that it's water baptism that saves you. That clearly isn't the point. That clearly isn't the point. The issue is they had not received the Holy Spirit because that's what saves you. That's what Galatians is saying. That's what Paul says. That's what Paul says in Romans 8. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12. That's what saves you, the Holy Spirit baptism. If a person has been baptized in the Holy Spirit, one, the Holy Spirit is never going to leave that person. And we know that because we were prophesied that way back in Jeremiah, way back in Ezekiel. Jesus tells us that a person is born of the spirit. So that person does not lose the Holy Spirit simply by, by, by means of them not being water baptized. However, being water baptized doesn't merit you anything if you don't have the spirit. There is no pastor that says that if you don't have this, uh, the, 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 the water, then you're not a son of his. However, the pastor is clear in Romans 8, 9 and 14 that not having the spirit and being led by the spirit, you are not his. You okay, must wait, have wait, the wait, Holy wait, so, Acts chapter, wait, wait, Acts so, chapter okay. 2, verse 38. Now, but listen, this is what I'm going to do. Because if, if y'all want to set up something and do this again, uh, because I've got to get up early in the morning and take my, gr my granddaughter. My the daughter only reason, the but only I, reason I'll, I'll go over Acts 2.38. I'll okay. go over Acts yeah. 238. Okay. And, and, then, and then, Corey, if, if, if I could say something just quickly before you head out after Don, you know, and you go over something real quick, it's going to be like five minutes, or if, if that's cool. Go ahead. That's fine. Okay. okay. So here, Acts 2.38, Peter said to them, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you just said you have the Holy Spirit prior to baptism. Here, it's being taught that you receive the Holy Spirit after baptism. So what happened in John 10, 44? And we'll, we'll come back to this passage, but in John 10, 44, it's clear that it, he's, not, he's not giving an order. 
an order of salvation, repent, number one, two, be baptized, three, receive the Holy Spirit. If that's the case in John 10, 44, that worked the other way around, didn't it? They received the Holy Spirit before they were baptized. Wait, let's but deal with this text. Is it not saying that the Holy Spirit no, is not? After? No, it's not, because we have what's called an exegetical use of the chi. Now, you don't know what you may not know what that is, but even in English, we have what's called the ep, what's what's called ep exegetical. That is using one or two words or phrases or three to to to, to bolster your point. And this word chi, let me let me highlight this word chi. I want you all to see this word chi because I think that what's happening is we've gotten um, used to thinking that the word and is always okay. and. It does not. Look below at the very bottom. Can you read that, uh, 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 JP? And also even and yet, but. So when does that chi actually mean yet or also or even? Bro, as I've said many times, I do not speak Greek. Bro. Okay. Well, I would say I would say consult a a um consult the BDAG uh, or or consult a lexicon or a Greek commentary because in this case we do not have an order of salvation. What we do have um, is the ep ep exegetical use of the word chi. So what he's saying is repent each of you being baptized and be baptized um, in in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, namely also receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. You being baptized or you, you being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ brings about the gift that is the Holy Spirit, brings about the giving of this word, Doreon, which is the giving of the Spirit. That's what you're going to receive by being placed in, being baptized into Christ. Holy Spirit baptism, that is namely receiving, also receiving, yet receiving. That's the point of this word, this ep exegetical use of the kind. It might be a little bit, um, I don't want to say above your pay grade, but it might be a little bit. No, nuanced nobody you into this but, understood a word you just said. That was so jumbled. I don't care. I don't listen. The, the, point is, the point is, whether you understood it or not, I'm, I'm giving you the point. Now, you, I said go back and consult a Greek commentary. So, so should, I, should I stay away incorrect. from the grammar? Hey. Should I stay away from the grammar because you don't understand it? So do you, would you say then this verse was translated incorrectly? No, it's not translated incorrectly. Well, okay, so right here, when it's saying repent and each of you be baptized. So he's telling them to go and get baptized, right? If I say, if not, I'm not saying this to you, but if I say, shut up and be quiet. If right. I just say, if I tell a person, not you, but someone, if I say, hey, shut up and be quiet. Mm -hmm. What about shut up, it? Shut, up, shut up and don't say another word. Okay. I use the word and, did I not? So, oh, okay. Am I, I saying two different here. things? You're saying, you're saying this is not water baptism again. I'm saying this is the ep exegetical use of the word chi. Wait, wait. Is this or is this or is this not water baptism again? I don't think it is. Oh, and that's why there's this mis. You don't think any time the Bible says to be well, baptized. Well, that's, that's not true at all. Hey, that's not so, true at all. So, Don, let me hop in real quick. Um, so, Corey, let me ask you a question. Do you know how we enter into covenant with Jesus Christ? How do we enter into covenant with Jesus Christ? Yeah. So, for example, in the old covenant on Mount Sinai, Moses was the mediator, uh, the mediator. Right. And so he took the blood of bulls and goats. Right. And with water and sprinkled it upon all the people. Then after that, the nobles of Israel went up to eat and drink. And then so Jesus Christ, who was the mediator of the new covenant. Right. His he died on a cross. Blood and water came out of his side. But also we go down in water to die to the old covenant. Because death happens through baptism. Okay. We we die, right? Romans chapter 7, verse 4 says, Do you not know, brethren, that um uh we have died to the law by the body of Christ? So when we went down in water baptism, we died to the old testament, to the old things. We die with Christ, so therefore we could be born anew, and now we're in covenant because now we have blood and water to enter into covenant. Just like you cannot have the father without the son. You need both the Father, the Son, and you need the Holy Spirit. And you need the blood, water, and spirit, like it says in 1 John 5. And Jesus, and it also says in Revelation 17, 14, that we are called, chosen, and faithful. You need all three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, blood, water, and spirit. And you need to be called, chosen, and faithful. This is this is synergistically. And this is what the Father has commanded. This is what the Son has commanded as well. So you need to go down to water to be baptized. It's part of you entering the covenant. And also, one last thing. In a Jewish wedding, it's called uh, before the bride and the bridegroom would get married, they would go through a mikvah, which is a baptism and immersion. And mm -hmm. so Jesus is the bride. 
uh, or the bridegroom. We, we are the bride, right? And so we're the church, the bride. And so Jesus was baptized, preparing for the wedding in heaven. And we need to prepare as well by going down to water as well. So there's so much to water baptism. This is why he commands it. You know what I'm saying? Now, we understand, like, let's say, deep on the cross, he was literally. Okay, he got so. raptured. Yeah, so <laughs> let, uh, let, me, let me use this, this last passage so I can, I can go ahead and, and, and move on. Uh, and I understand. Listen, everyone is not going going to agree, and and I have made it my mission. I'll do my very best, but I won't die on a hill to try to make someone agree. Uh, Acts thirteen forty eight. It says that when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing, glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, they believed. Um, there, are, most occasions of salvation in the Bible are not accompanied by baptism. What's happening with baptism, and as far as I can tell, even by looking at church history, even by looking at uh, what's happening during the culture, is that this is a way of publicly declaring to the people that I am now something new. Because to get baptized, you couldn't go find a body of water in that place and that that it was empty, that no one was around. You're going to find somebody at a particular body. So that person, Bob, got baptized. Frank got baptized. Mary got baptized. Now, getting baptized getting wet with no Holy Spirit. All you did was just get wet. But if you want to hold to that it's a requirement for salvation, fine. Have that. I think that you're adding so, to the <clears throat> gospel. Uh, that's my take. You think that I'm I'm not, I'm taking away from, as Don said, a sacrament. That's fine. I think what I would say is just read the text, exit the text, um, observe what's being stated, the context of it. And then if you come away with that, then, then fine. But I'm not okay. going to read into it. If that's what you want to do, pray and God. I'm going to say one last thing, Corey. Um, so my son, you know, youngest son, he's diagnosed with autism. He can't speak. So we know that the Bible says that for one believes with the heart leading to righteousness and one confesses with the mouth leading to, to salvation. Right. And so we have to confess Jesus to be saved. So let's say if one day he comes to believe in Jesus, but he can't speak, he can't confess Jesus. He'll still be saved because God is going to hold us accountable for what we are able to do. The thief on the cross was literally unable to be baptized. You see what I'm saying? But if somebody is able to be baptized and they choose not to do it, they won't be saved. But if somebody is willing to be baptized, but they are literally unable to do it, I believe the Lord will save them. So God is going to hold so, us accountable so, for what so we are will, able to do. So he will vitiate his own word. He will go. He will nullify his own word. Corey, my son can't speak. So you're saying that he because he can't speak, he can't be saved because well, Paul says there are mute, there are mute people that can acknowledge. And so that's the whole point. The word the word for confession leads us to understand that it, that is this, this homilageo, homilageo, publicly declare that Jesus is the son of God. Right. That's what it means in the Greek. It means it means to confess. Now, the word yes. so the nuance for, the, for, uh, for confess means to either verbally speak it or just simply to acknowledge, because obviously there are cases where a person simply cannot. And so if you confess, if you acknowledge that part is fine. And so am I going to say that this actual uh, deed is what, what what makes me safe? If that's what you guys believe, that's fine. I promise you, I can promise you this. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to, I'm okay. not going to spend the next hour or the next 30 minutes or really even the next five minutes trying to convince something that, that you will not, you guys have your way of saying, well, that's fine. I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong. Praise God. Praise God. So, um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and get off this. Cause I've before you get going, man, okay. um, I appreciate the conversation, Don, Michael, Corey, Corey, can you just, uh, do a quick prayer for our brother radar? He has, uh, the the 19 he has a, he has the 19 virus oh. COVID. oh oh okay okay lord we just thank you father for just the desire to know more about you um as we've always said even in this discussion it's not about who's right but what's right and so father we know that having you um is what's most important um growing closer to you um, Father, and doing so with other people in love is the most important thing. And so, Father, we know that you have told us that we should love you as much as we can and to love our brothers. And so we want to also extend a word of prayer for our brother Radar, for our brother Eduardo, Rabbi, who loves you dearly, who has a heart towards bringing people who are Jewish, understanding this Jewish Messiah, having them, leading them to understanding you, placing their faith in you. So, God, we pray that you would be on him, that your hand would touch his body, that you would also protect his household, Lord God. And even in this, as always, Lord God, that you would get glory through his sickness. I pray that his symptoms be mild uh, and that his uh, resolve be strengthened. 
And I said the same thing, Father, even for uh, uh, my two young brothers here, as well as JP, myself, and even Marcus, who left earlier. God, have your way. Use us to glorify you, uh, because ultimately, Lord God, we want to be uh, responsible as being used vessels to bring people to you. So have your way in us, Lord God. Father, be with us as we go through this night, Lord God, and help us to wake up in the morning with you on our mind, praising you. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good, good conversation, uh, Corey. Amen. Good conversation. You owe me some money. I was supposed to be on 15 Amen. minutes. I've been here for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all take Corey, care. I'll give you some free content. You, you as well. You're going to be able to make a video. You got. You can make three videos off of this. Three videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might do that. You know what? I might not make it. I might not do anything tomorrow. I'll just use this and play this, y'all. Mm. All right, man. And then, call, and then I might call you a false teacher. Listen, I'm very clear in what I believe. I explained my scenario. You are not a false teacher. I'm just messing with no, you. No, no, but I'm saying, like, I explained it. I think I explained it. Obviously, we may. I, I never heard a Christian say, because obviously, I'm a little surprised that you don't have to get baptized at all. So that is a surprise to me, but obviously you you, you learn different worldviews. I would say this. Let me let me say this to everybody. Let me say this to everybody so I can leave. I used to think that because I I heard this statement. I've never heard anyone say that. If most of the people that are listening and those that listen later, if you just listen to other people, people think that there's just my way of thinking or my opponents. That like I said earlier, there's only there's Calvinists and non-Calvinists. Um, you would be surprised a large portion of people hold to that. You would be you would be shocked to think that. I used to think that you had to be baptized. Um, I can name countless seminaries and countless pastors who come out of those seminaries who you guys listen to who teach baptism, but do not believe it's a requirement for salvation. I can I, you'd be surprised at some of the people that you read their books and listen to their commentary who would say the same thing. And so my, my point, and I'm glad you said that, is Guys, do your very best to study. Maybe if you don't, even someone that you disagree with, find out why they believe, what they believe, how they come to that conclusion. And as I said, if you want to argue a point, write a paper over it and make yourself prove yourself, prove your points, actually the text, go through the different nuances, what the Hebrew says, what the Greek says, what commentary say, and then see if you can prove your point to yourself. So broaden your horizons. Don't come into an argument with presuppositions uh, and then be open to let the Lord lead the people that are listening. Because I can promise you, there's a lot of people that believe exactly what I believe. I teach you all to be baptized. You should get baptized. Um, but if you don't, you're not going to hell. That's not, I don't believe that. So anyway, let me go ahead and go. I got my. Um, Thank you for that, Corey. Take care. All right. Goodbye, y'all. All right. So that was a that was an interesting conversation. Don, man, you're an excellent debater. Like that was, I learned new arguments. You know what I'm saying? I learned both positions. Obviously, you know, I believe that. We have to get baptized. I believe it's a commandment. If you don't get baptized, I'm not saying you're going to get thrown straight into hell. But if you defy getting baptized and you die in a state of rebellion, you're going to hell. So I don't believe you could just wake up, say, I'm a Christian and I refuse to get baptized. There's no point. It's worthless. I don't really care and be good. I think that we ought to get baptized. If there's an accident, then hey. There's an accident, but I, I do not believe that we can go our whole life. And again, I didn't know there were Christians that believe that, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to look into that. It's but a, it, it's, it's like a spinoff of free grace. It's like kind of free grace adjacent because again, to be free grace, you have to believe that there's literally nothing that you need to do in order to be saved besides believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins. He rose again on the third day you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so then that extends even to baptism. And I'm not quite sure if it's also a, a traditional Calvinist view, because like I said, John Calvin taught that baptism is necessary. It's a requirement. And he taught that you can't divorce the water from the spirit. Right. So even though he will say that the water, the washing is symbolic, it is spiritually effectual. There is actually let, something let me address going Corey. on in the spiritual realm when you're baptized. Yeah, let me address Corey. I mean, not Corey, um, Marlon. Marlon, I, my bad. Corey, Marlon, my bad. All right. Um, Marlon, again, I believe Christians ought to get baptized. I believe it's a commandment, right? Now, God can have grace if we break his commandments. We're not under the Bring law. Bring Marlon on. Bring Marlon on. 
Yeah, Marlon, come on, yeah. Marlon, real quick. Yeah. So don't run, yeah. Marlon. Because I don't even yeah. know what he's saying, huh, too. Yeah, Marlon, yeah. don't run. You got called out just now, Marlon. Don't run. Hey, hey, JP, real quick. Uh, in Irenaeus against Heresies, Book One, Chapter Twenty One, uh, One to Two. No, it I says, understand. And, Listen, I grant that the church fathers all oh, okay. had to get baptized, but somebody oh, okay, okay. Ori is going to yeah. say he doesn't care about the church fathers in that regard. So if he doesn't care, he doesn't care. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm saying <clears throat> I never, I never encountered somebody like Corey's view because I have heard people say that you won't get in trouble with God if you don't get baptized, but you ought to, and you have to get baptized. If you don't, you won't lose your salvation, but you have to. I heard that view, right? Like, I, I did hear that view. That yeah. not to be Corey's view. Corey goes one step deeper, or I should say one step lower than that. He goes, you don't have to get baptized at all. And that one I never heard. So that's a surprise yeah. for me. You know what I'm saying? Not bashing the guy. I just, I literally never heard the view. So I'm going to look into his arguments because I never heard it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I would say it's really a free grace maybe even Baptist kind of belief. I, I'm pr Here's what I know. John Calvin taught infant baptism. A man doesn't teach infant baptism if he doesn't believe in the power of baptism. You know what I'm saying? Because the only alternative to that is believer's baptism, which is that, you know, you get baptized as a symbol to signify you. So this is what I'm saying. All of the church, including the reformers, Martin Luther, John Calvin, they all taught that baptism is a necessary part for salvation. Yes, the church throughout history has also taught there are exceptions to the rule. You got hit by a bus on the way home after giving your life to Christ. You died as a martyr. They have what is known as the baptism of blood. That's spoken of by the church fathers as well. There are people who may not have been baptized in water, but they gave their life to Christ. They were under persecution and they didn't reject christ and were killed for it and the church thought that that was a baptism of blood and so mm -hmm. yeah the there are exceptions to the rule but the teachers all taught that you need to get baptized not only that but in the bible we see three ways to get regenerated we see examples of people getting regenerated verbally we see examples of people getting regenerated with the laying of hands and we see people in the book of Acts getting regenerated by the by the uh, dumping in water. So we see all three of those examples. So, again, you know what I'm saying? I believe we all ought to get back, all of us, like all of us. And, you know, I don't believe in, in, in one saved, always saved. So that's why I wasn't trying to go in that direction. But obviously, if you're a Christian and you are saved, I believe you can be saved. And if you're in defiance and you go... Water baptism is garbage. It's paganism. It's 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 just a a like a you know a traditional thing. I don't like it. It's trash. It's whatever. I'm not gonna do it. I believe if you die in that state of rebellion, you can be in trouble. I believe that. Now there's a difference. Again, I was traumatized, right? I didn't get baptized because I was traumatized, um, and then eventually I did. I believe there could have been grace. There could have been exceptions. So. You know, that's just that's just my stance. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, uh, gospel truth is running for his life. That man was called out. He didn't show up. So there you have it. He could be busy, though. You know, he got that a wife man, and kids. That man's a track star, man. Track star. <laughs> uh, let's see. No Christians would bash baptism. That's a fallacy, JP. How is it a fallacy? I'm giving you a scenario, right? A scenario can't be a, a, a fallacy. Right. Somebody out there could say, I don't like baptism. I think it's worthless. I don't think there's anything for it. And I'm not going to do it in defiance. See, and, and also the problem with saying that baptism is not necessary for salvation, it gets people to think, well, oh, I don't have to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I know some people uh, who didn't get baptized for years because they didn't think that it was necessary. You know what I'm saying? And they don't understand that that's part of you being born again. You have to go down in water and die with Christ. You know what I'm saying? You have to die with Christ first in order to be born again. This is why Jesus commands the water. The water has so much meaning. I mean, life first came out of the water. Uh, you know, the Lord said, uh, you know, he said, bring forth the, um, uh, the animals out of the sea. You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's so much uh, 
significance of the water. This is why Jesus commanded it. You need blood and water to enter into covenant. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they had the, the, the mikvah. This was going on in, in, in the New Testament as well, right? Jesus yeah. got baptized. John the yeah. Baptist was, was baptizing. Like we just yeah. see. So to, to see it so active, baptism in the New Testament, everybody's doing it. Baptism, baptism in water. Mm -hmm. And then to go and take, and again, um, just in general, I'm not speaking about Corey. Corey made excellent arguments with the Greek, but I'm saying for me, right, for me and just my anecdotal um, view of things, to see how water baptism was like such a big part of the New Testament and to say you don't have to do that, well, then that means they didn't have to do that. So then let's just remove baptism from the Bible altogether. Because what was the point at all if it didn't have some sort of a value? And it is a commandment. So, you know, for me, I just think that um, it is it is something that you ought to do. Like, that's just what I believe. You know what I'm saying? And and yeah. I think that if you just go living your life saying, oh, I don't have to get baptized. I don't care about it. You know what I'm saying? I think that there's some trouble there. I do believe that. Could there be grace? Yeah. Yes, there is <clears throat> grace. God, we're not under the law, so there could be grace, right? But what I'm saying is, is that you can be in danger if you die in rebellion. Yeah, and then, you know, in a Jewish culture, I, I shared this before with, with Corey, that before the bride and the bridegroom got married, they would go through a mikvah, which is a immersion or baptism, a purification, a cleansing. And so when once you understand Jewish culture as well, now you see, okay, Jesus was baptized. He tells his followers to be baptized. Uh, Paul says that we are espoused to, to Jesus Christ in 2 Corinthians 11, 2. And there's going to be a wedding in heaven. So are, are we being yeah. prepared for that wedding that's going to be in heaven? Are Let we going down the water? Real quick. It's a command, but not what saves you. Well, to my surprise, Corey actually says it's not a command. So that's what I'm saying. I was kind of blindsided by Corey's position because... You know, Corey said it wasn't a command. Now, again, you know, I never heard Corey's position before. So I am going to look into it, right? I am going to look into it. And I'm going to look into the Greek. I'm going to look into that stuff, you know? So, you know, and, and it appears that for the first six, for the first 1,600 years, they all believed just that. So, yeah. You yep. know, that is interesting. All right. Does anybody in the chat believe that we are in error? If you do, feel free to click the link. If not, forever hold your peace. You know what I'm saying? Forever hold your peace. Uh, so help me God. So there you have it. There you and, have it. And, and JP, can I say one thing real quick? Yeah. Um, you know, there's three scriptures that actually talk about baptism saves us. Mark 16, 16. Right. Uh, Acts 2.38, 1 Peter 3.21. And the devil's job is to get us to not obey the commandments of Jesus. His job is to get us to doubt the word of God. And so if somebody reads where it says baptism saves you, but they don't believe it. Right. They've been deceived by the devil because his job is to get you to doubt what's written. See, my thing is, I believe what I can read. If I can read it. Oh, I believe it. Baptism saves. Oh, I believe it. Believes and is baptized. I believe it. Must repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins and then receive the Holy Spirit. I believe it. Uh, Jesus says in Matthew 18, verse 1 through, I think, 3, he says, unless you be converted and become like a little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must have childlike faith. Whatever the word of God says, believe it. Don't doubt. I believe it. I believe what I can read. Hmm. No, yeah, that's that's good. I, yeah, I, and if we could go back to Acts 2.38, see, another problem with the argument Corey was trying to make um, is that you need to be a Greek scholar, essentially, to understand the Bible. Because on one hand, he's bashing me for appealing to authorities like the church fathers, the men who assembled the canon, who led the church for literally the grand majority of church history going all the way back. We have church fathers going dating all the way back to around the time that the Gospels were written. And uh, unanimously, they all taught water baptism was necessary. John 3, 5, the ones that did comment on John 3, 5, 3, 5 they all said here is speaking of water baptism, including, like I said, several of the, the foundational reformers. 
uh, which is why men like John Calvin believed in infant baptism. Infant baptism does not make sense in a context where baptism as a sacrament is not spiritually effectual. And so if we, so on one hand, he's bashing me for appealing to the church fathers, but then when we try to read this scripture, uh, and this was Acts chapter two, verse 38, when we read it in the most plain, logical way, he says, oh no, you're not understanding because you don't know how the Kai works in the Greek and the da da da. And it's like, oh, so, you're essentially saying then the only people who can properly understand the scripture are people who are fluent in Greek. And then guess what I have to do now? I have to trust you as an authority figure that you understand what you're reading and that you understand it better than the church fathers. So it's a contradiction that falls completely apart. Now, again, if we go to Acts 2, 38, right now, uh, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, here, let's go up a little bit. Let's go up a little bit. Go to like the previous verse. All right, go down. Hey, brothers, I got to head out, man. I appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all and uh, God bless. Oh, bro, we got to hey, We got to talk God about bless, Jesus bro. Yahweh when you get the chance, Michael. God bless. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. God bless, brother. And, you know, I know he is Yahweh. He is. Yeah, Yahweh, the, Yahweh the, the son. You don't believe he's the most high God. So we'll talk about that one there, right? Okay. All right, brother. <laughs> All right, God bless. God bless, bro. Okay. I just wanted to see the context of this verse. So this is, you know, towards the end of Peter's great speech, right? Uh, on the day of Pentecost. And he's essentially preaching. I believe it's the day of Pentecost. Correct me if I'm wrong, JP, if you recall differently, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and he, he gives his great speech. He essentially preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we go to verse 37. And now the people who are listening, look what it says. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the holy spirit yeah i'll be honest with you this appears and i'm being a fair man like this appears and i'm not an expert on the topic but repent is an action you have to take and to be baptized that appears to be an action something that needs to be done baptism right me getting baptized right every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins i feel it, like if this were saying born again yeah or or anything like that it would say repent and be born again every one of you if the baptism word here was to mean a spiritual state of affairs jp here's how we know for a fact this is talking about water baptism when Jesus says, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is he talking about water baptism? Yes. Exactly. This is the exact same thing that Peter is saying here. Go and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And so this is Peter when asked, okay, look, brother, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Christ. What do we do? He says, repent, which <laughs> uh, turn from your sins and be baptized, talking about water. What in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? And then what? Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it is 100 percent talking about water baptism. Now, and it is 100 fair, what was his argument? The and uh, did it mean he and? was trying to do some kind of weird gymnastics with the, the Greek, right? And uh, like, yeah, here's what I know for a fact. Many of the church fathers who commented on this verse, they spoke Greek because that's what they grew. They knew Greek like how we know English. And they uh, uh, apparently they didn't understand the grammar. That'd be like a Chinese person who took an English class in college trying to explain how English works to you, bro. That's ridiculous. And so don't be fooled. Corey is saying we need to appeal to authority because I know what he's not saying is that 
oh, every single person needs to go and get a degree, go to a seminary, get a degree, learn how the Greek works. Right. Because the, that's his argument for how he's able to understand these things. So he had, he knows everyone isn't going to do that. So naturally, he's saying, so if you're not going to do that, trust someone who did like me. Yeah, and to be right? fair, when when some people are saying that water baptism, like no water is mentioned, but I mean, repent and be water baptized. I mean, so when Jesus says be baptized in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, was water mentioned? No. OK, but obviously he's talking about water baptism. No, yeah, it appears clear here. It does. It does appear clear here. It does. Uh, somebody said, "Get Don to address Ezekiel 36." I don't I mean. I don't. <sighs> Let's see what's here. Uh, give me one second, good sir. Not a brother. Not a single verse. Like you just the whole chapter. Ezekiel 36. The whole chapter. What verse? Yeah, brother, you're going to have to be a little bit more detailed because I, I'm the one to sit here through a whole chapter exegesis of, uh, okay, 24. Okay, 24. All right. Let's see what 24 says. I will take you to the nation's. I, mean, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from your uncleanliness and from your idols. I will cleanse you. What exactly does he want me to uh, elaborate yeah, this on? Seems, this seems like this makes your argument. Yeah, 100 percent is literally saying that he's going to sprinkle clean water on us, but. Yeah, you what's know. the what's the what's the argument that you guys wanted to address? Yeah, here is a commentary um, from the 1800s, right? Uh, and all Christians understand it of baptism in water, remitting all offenses. This is George Leo Haydock in, from 1849. So here's the thing: even like I was saying, bro. Even the reformers, the original reformers believed in water baptism being necessary for salvation or being a, a vital act. Is it impossible for someone to be saved who hasn't been water baptized? Obviously not. We see examples of that in the Bible. But even the reformers taught that water baptism is necessary. Now, guys like Ulrich Zwingli didn't, right? And to be honest, most of Protestant Christianity gets their it has inherited their doctrine from Ulrich Zwingli see a lot of people and to address a comment that he made and if it was a fair comment that my is my brand so to speak as a Christian on YouTube thus far has been someone who's been shifting from doctrines to doctrines and that's 100 percent true and the reason is because there is no clear way to identify who should be an authority when understanding these things and the reason why i'm stable now and i speak with a degree of confidence that i've never had before when talking about these things is because i now trust that the disciples did not fail christ when they were commissioned to go and make disciples in the name of the father son and holy spirit teaching all that i have taught you and these men bishops Right. And I know that's a dirty word now because it's been soiled by Roman Catholicism. But before the Roman Catholic Church was even a thing, before the Great Schism, before the word bishop was being used. And so the point is, all of the teachings were passed down and we see consensus on certain things all the way from the beginning, all the way up to the Protestant Reformation. There are things that they disagree on, but there are things that they also all agree on. And so it would be safe to believe that the things that they all agree on are the original teachings. Why? Because many of these men, this is before the internet, they, people weren't able to FaceTime like we're doing right now and discuss doctrine. So if a guy 
over in Egypt has the exact same doctrine as a guy in Rome, as a guy in Jerusalem who have never met and had an opportunity to speak with one another, and they're living in the first three centuries of the church. What does that tell you? It tells you that the they all got the same doctrine coming from the same source. This is the exact same argument we use to um, defend the Bible. We say the reason we know the Bible is reliable is because we have all these manuscripts dispersed over a large region, some in different translations, and they're all essentially saying the same thing. And so they must have come from an original source. So the exact same argument we use to justify we, why we should rely on the manuscripts is the exact same argument we use to rely upon apostolic teachings through the bishops that came immediately after the apostles. And someone might then say, oh, then should we become a Roman Catholic? Should we become Eastern Orthodox? I personally am of the position, no, right now. I am, I have grown a lot of love for Eastern Orthodox people and even Catholic people because I see so much of what they were trying to get across, like the importance of baptism, was 100% orthodox apostolic teaching that has never been deviated from until very late, until very recently, relative to the history of the church. So I have grown a love for them, and I have grown, a, especially for the Eastern Orthodox, because I see the desire to return to the apostolic traditions, but there are certain things that I am seeing some problems with in the modern Eastern Orthodox Church in terms of doctrine when I compare it to what the church taught even beyond the Council of Nicaea. I do one day, because I did text you about this, I do one day, if, you, if, you, if you're down with this, and this is not you teaching, I want to poke your mind about the Marian doctrines um, and things like that. We don't right. have to get well, into that. The church, again, also similarly, always taught that Mer Mary was a perpetual virgin. They didn't teach a lot of the other things that we have come to believe about Mary, at least in the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. From my research, again, I'm still reading. And so that's why I, I am very careful not to pass like any harsh, definitive um, judgment on Roman Catholics or Eastern Orthodox because uh, I'm still studying it out. But from what I've seen, some of the things in regards to Mary um, are new, right? But what the church has always thought is that Mary was a perpetual virgin and that um, she is the mother of God. That is an appropriate title for her because Jesus is God and she is his mother. Yeah, no, yeah, I have no issue with that. I think it's when people say she's sinless or or praying to the saints. Like, what did the early church believe about praying to the saints in heaven i have not studied that enough to comment on the praying to the saints or the sinlessness of mary okay uh, no worries yeah. mm -hmm. all right let's finish off with this verse right here yeah sure oh you wanted to say something no no i i mean we already did you bring up a new verse to no 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 somebody in the chat said they wanted us to address this so let's let's read this okay Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people Mm -hmm. who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Right. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. What verse and is this? This is uh, Acts 10, mm -hmm. 47 and down. Okay. Yeah, so it appears this is saying, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So this text is saying they had the Holy Spirit before being water baptized. I don't have an issue with that. Obviously, as I stated, I believe you can be regenerated, laying a hands, verbally confessing, or water baptism. But I believe we have to be water baptized. Because look, the very next verse says, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So even though they had the Holy Spirit, before getting baptized, they were right. they were okay. This is easy, bro. Um, essentially, this is still at the beginning of the um preaching to the Gentiles, right? And so, just as there were debates about whether or not Gentiles needed to follow the law of Moses, right, which the church ultimately settled that Gentiles do not need to keep the law of Moses. Uh, similarly, 
this was an act of God to give the apostles complete and utter assurance that Gentiles are invited into the new covenant. So they received the Holy Spirit prior to baptism so that there can be no question and that they are welcomed into the covenant. And then if we take a look at some of what the church fathers have written about this topic, um, let's take a look at, for instance, Cyprian of Carthage from 258 AD, he writes on this topic. And then he says, uh, in the warmth of their faith and believing in the Lord with their whole heart, and when filled with the Spirit, they bless God in diverse tongues. Still, nonetheless, the blessed Apostle Peter, mindful of the divine precept and the gospel, commanded that those same men should be baptized who had already been filled with the Holy Spirit, that nothing might seem to be neglected to the observance by the apostolic instruction in all things of the law of the divine precept and the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. So this is Cyprian of Carthage, 258 AD, very early. And so he's saying here, why? Mindful of the divine precept and the gospel, he commanded them to be baptized. So what Cyprian is saying here is that a part of the gospel is that we must be baptized. That is a part of the entire message of Jesus. It is a part of the salvific formula, as the church has always taught. And so, yeah, you know, earlier in the chat, people were trying to say, oh, what denomination is he? Is he Eastern Orthodox? Is he? All I'm doing is believing what the earliest Christians believe. And where I draw the line is where I see contradictions. So yeah. if the earliest Christians believed that, you know, um, I mean, man, there's some real harsh things that I could say right now. But no, keep, just, save that, say, yeah, save that for the interview. Yeah, but let's just say for a long time the church had very specific doctrines, and then I see at some point the Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox changing their position on them. Um, yeah, so that's where I draw the line where I start to see 180s and um uh, there's a logical answer for that. There's a logical answer for that. But like you said, that's for another time. And uh, yeah, and so this is a taste when I come back to YouTube, if and when I come back to YouTube in the capacity of talking about the Lord, it will be like this. We will read the church fathers. I have retired, JP, from trying to understand the Bible myself. I have retired from that. Why? Because as Peter said, that the un taught and unstable if you're following a man that was not taught then you're following a heretic more like, almost guaranteed and then if he was taught you got to ask him by who you see if you cannot trace that chain of education all the way back to jesus christ you are learning from somebody who just one day picks up the bible and decided that they were going to figure it out themselves but Peter said these things are hard to understand. When the eunuch was reading the Bible and he was asked, do you understand what he was, read was reading? When he was asked that, he said, how can I unless someone explain it to me, right? The faith was delivered. It was passed down. It was not discovered, right? Every generation isn't expected to rediscover Christianity. Everybody is not expected to go into the Bible like a, a theologian. I remember when I first became a Christian and I was like, you know what? I want to read the Bible. I remember reading it. And my first honest impression was this is confusing. Immediately, what I did was I went and bought a study Bible. At the time, it was a John MacArthur study Bible. And so everything I read, I'm going back to what he was saying. Who is teaching me? I'm being guided by the teachings of the early church. Whatever they taught, that's what I'll believe. P particularly the doctrines where you see multiple church fathers over the course of the first three centuries on agreeing on something. So if I see a dozen men teaching all the way from the first to the third century that John 3, 5 is talking about wa water baptism, and I also see no contradicting opinions held by any church father, for a thousand years, 
then that's what I'm going to believe because that's what the church always taught. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't blame somebody for having that kind of attitude. I mean, especially when you you back it with the Bible, right? So, but that's the thing. The church fathers all use scripture. Correct. It's like that's it, what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, it's not like they're see. All it is is whose interpretation do you want to go with? Do you want to go with a guy who was born like within the last fifty years, or do you want to go with a guy who was born? 50 years after the apostles died you know what i'm saying like who is more likely the people who were monks martyrs who were taught by the disciples and their disciples and their disciples or a guy who just picked up the bible one day and decided i'm going to figure this out by myself by the guidance of the holy spirit you know uh <clears throat> so i've seen guys who have done that teach a doctrine for a decade and then flip you know you've seen it too no of course. multiple people yeah, so there's a, there's a very popular uh catholic theologian now who was a calvinist his whole life and right. then became a catholic and there are people that flip-flop for years so yeah that's true yeah and the reason why most people nowadays are becoming eastern orthodox or Catholic is because they are reading church history and seeing the um the it's not matching up. It's not matching up. Yeah, the going the to only issue I have Don, Yeah, go ahead. The only issue I have with the Catholics and Eastern Orthodox, well, for the Catholics is the Pope, but I don't want to go there. But yeah. it's the Marian doctrines are very hard to swallow. Bro, I'm not a Roman Catholic. I'm Roman Catholic uh, sympathetic. I'm Eastern no, Orthodox. I know that, but, but that's what I'm, I'm not saying. Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox. Yeah, I that, disagree. That's the one thing. Like yeah. they 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 put Mary to too much high esteem. Yeah, and it's just like to say she's sinless and intercession of the saints. Those are two. I reasons. don't even mind her, them call saying that she's sinless. Maybe she was. She was the mother of God. You know, when you really think about it, it does sound strange. This idea that, you know, Mary was walking around, for instance, with Jesus, God Almighty in her stomach and just sinning it up. You know, mm -hmm. that doesn't that don't compute. Um, you know, she was a very pious woman. Well, yeah, And then they say she didn't have a. they say that there are arguments with sinful nature and all that stuff. It's just a couple of things. And then also the intercession of the saints. Now, again, I'm not saying Catholics are going to hell. I'm yeah. not saying that. But for me personally, I I agree with the Eastern Orthodox Church. It's just the Marian doctrines and the intercession of the saints. You yeah, those saying? those doctrines uh, I have I am also not convinced of personally. Uh, well, here, here's, also the, here's the icon. homie. All right, Polycarp. By grace ye are saved, not of works. By the will of God through Jesus Christ, we shall reign together with him, provided only we believe. Yeah, and that's what it looks like when you cherry pick the church fathers. Go and read all anyone who thinks that verse is uh Polycarp being a free gracer or being a Calvinist or whatever. All you have to do is go and read Polycarp. He has a lengthy paragraph talking about the importance of repentance from sin and walking in sanctification. So, no, Pol Polycarp did not teach that. That's not true. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And, no, and all think, of the church fathers speak like that, by I the way. I think Cor what Corey is saying is that Polycarp uh, didn't teach that uh, baptism was necessary for salvation. So that's what Corey is saying. Yeah, you can't find that passage. Find where Polycarp says, quote, you don't need to be baptized to be saved. See, what he's doing is he's taking out of context what Polycarp is saying there, how faith and belief is the foundation of faith. And as all the church fathers, even the reformers and the Bible teaches, is that faith is not divorced from works, right? There are certain actions and behaviors that are that come along with true faith. And so, uh, you know, that's not Polycarp saying that you don't need to be baptized. He also doesn't say there you need to repent from sin. Do you believe in an antinomian doctrine then? 
Does Corey believe that you can live in perpetual sin of all Nate kinds and be saved? Oh no, I don't think I don't think Corey's a free gracer because no, but that's him. how he's using that quote from Polycarp. See, Polycarp doesn't say that uh you need to here bring back the quote up. Did the quote have repent in it? Uh give me one moment. Uh not uh, of works. Yeah, go right. ahead. So if we were to use this verse the way uh, Corey's using it, we also don't need to repent from sin to any degree. He would be essentially saying Polycarp's a free gracer. You don't need to be baptized. You don't need to repent. All you have to do is go and read Polycarp's writings. It's very short. You can do it inside the space of an hour. There is not much from Polycarp. And uh, you can see what he has to say. And then you should read the martyrdom of Polycarp. Read how he died and read you know how important piety and living righteously is to be considered a christian but um but this is what happens i'll you know what let me not tell you why Corey hates the church fathers I, there's a very specific doctrine that was held by the church that condemns Corey's lifestyle uh and we won't get into details but oh, no, i'll tell you I, yeah I that mean, is why he hates the church fathers because no, I, mean, I think the that church it's, fathers it's, complete are all, unanimous all for a very long time on a very specific topic no no yeah but this is not a secret yeah the, it's once eternal security that didn't pop up till saint augustine no so, no it's, i'm not talking about that hmm? well, yeah you know. I, I don't we i gotta go to bed bro i gotta wake up at five o'clock to be at work in the morning but guess what this was cool i enjoyed this probably won't <laughs> see me again for a long time but this mm -hmm. was a fun little pop out, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But and, I, I do got to go. And you withheld a lot of information. So boom, win, win. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to coming back officially. But thank you for having is, me. Is it gonna, can you just tell us this? Is it going to still be the end of the year or maybe a little sooner? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I've been feeling really good lately, which is part of the reason why I came here. And by really good, I mean ready. No, you do talk. sound good. You sound confident. You do yeah. have your your arguments. You, you you do back it up. You got the church fathers. So, I say I say you 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 got a, a couple of bullets in the gun. You I think you're good to go. So yeah, but yeah, but I'm you know I'm working some on some stuff in the background. But yeah, man, life is real good. God has really blessed me in the last few months. He's really delivered me from some really bad stuff. And uh, yeah, it's um. I'm in a good place mentally, spiritually. Hey, yeah, look, sounding sharp, brother. Sounding sharp. Yeah, you know? thank you, bro. But all right, guys. So yeah, um, yes, y'all will see me soon enough, but when I'm not 100% sure. All right, all right. Hopefully sooner than later, brother, because you, you did bring a lot of interesting content to the internet, brother. So um, all right, man, take care, brother. All right, bro. Peace out.